Hello and welcome. Time for another video. All bets, trades, and the like within each his own risk and their own reward. 8.24 p.m. Eastern, June the 20th. My name is Derek. And uh, I, I, if I was, I would be fun to maybe at some point do like a 24-hour live stream. But if I were to do that, most likely from about 12 o'clock to like 9 o'clock would be just prepaid programming. And then come off and on with different assorted shows here and they'd be kind of fun. But... I know, there's a lot of stuff I just seemed like want to talk about a lot, and you know what? Might as well go on here and talk some more. The last video I did, which was like, what, an hour and a half, two hours ago, I finished it off. Just quickly looking at a goal for something to do, and just looking at this in the five-minute time frame, saying, man, or this at this time here, time to go along here. This is a spot where you'd have to do so, and what has happened since? Well, wow, gold continues to uh, go up. So yeah, it's been 5, 10, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 40. It's been like an hour. I mean, and I feel like doing another video. And the subject that I wanted to talk about, I didn't even get to. And the first one's like, man, whatever. I don't even know the answer to the question that I made. I think the answer is C, but it might be D. And that is, let's say I send one Litecoin from Treasure Wallet to the Litecoin deposit address in Binance. I wait 10 or 20 minutes and then sell for Bitcoin. And then turn it, turn, uh, then in turn I sell this Bitcoin for Theta. And if the ratio is 1200 to 1, I would get that many Theta. Or in turn, I'm getting my Theta, of course. I then take the Theta, withdraw it to my wallet, where I control the private keys. What did I just do? A, add supply. B, Remove supply, C, both, or D, neither A and B. I can make a case for, and I made the question, it's kind of funny. I thought the answer was D when I did it. But it's actually, I think, C. For if I am to, well, for, as far as Bitcoin is concerned, I am totally nothing more than a middleman. I literally am just taking someone's Bitcoin temporarily, literally for seconds, and then giving it to somebody else. So there's absolutely no supply change whatsoever on that side. Now, regarding the Litecoin and Theta, I added supply to their market by bringing Theta, and now someone, or Litecoin, I added supply of Litecoin, rather. Because if I deposited one, now someone on Binance in the Bitcoin trade now has one extra Litecoin. On the, and what they do with that, I don't know, but... And then somebody who wanted Bitcoin for 1200 Theta, well, their supply has been taken off the market into my hardware wallet. So that's, that's why I think the answer is C. At least from my end, that's what the answer I think would be. But how I look at it is, is an, uh, supply, I was a demander, not a supplier. Supplier are the ones that put in, to a degree, I'm at that. Suppliers are the ones that put in buy orders and sell orders. But oftentimes when I trade ratios, I'll sometimes try, like for example, if the bid ask ratio for something is like 1200 and 1204, and I'm looking to sell, I'll try to maybe sell at 1204, 1205, 1206. And if I'm looking to buy, try to buy at 1200. So I'll try to put a buyer sell order and see if someone short term will take it. But let's talk about an interesting strategy that I've been thinking about as far as ratio trading. And we'll, we'll say we're leaving off from where that was, and the ratio was 1200, and it has fallen from the 1200 to the 1130 range and not an area you want to ratio trade because that's a 70 point drop that's like six percent uh, and whatever whatever the rate is it's at an area less than what you want or you want to get more either way but this strategy is designed to force action or take advantage of short setups or extra gains on your volatility so better ratio trades as well that's what this is designed to do so here we'll sell theta here on market price or whatever we can get for best price we can and then place a buy order on Litecoin for the price you desire. The transaction will complete when, and there's only going to be three ways that this can end, and it come number one, is that Litecoin buy order that you hit, hits. And now that ratio, which was 1130, will now be lower than that and better than a 6 or 7% move. Maybe you'll get 9 or 10 or whichever one you were trying to designate towards. It might take a decent amount of time, maybe the rest of the day to get it, maybe just a few hours or into the next day after. But you just wait and let the market go, and you might be waiting for a 3-4% pullback, 
But if you're in a situation where you think, well, it's a good short setup, I think it's going to go down anyway. I mean, be, it will, maybe it won't, but if it does, I'll get a better trade. But what, is, but, but what happens if, say, it doesn't go down? And then theta goes down, though. Well, now you can just bail yourself out and just pretend the ratio never happened. So if I'm selling something at, say, 1,500 Satoshi, and I'm trying to buy the other coin going down, but it, it's maybe it's even going up. It's going sideways. It's barely going down. Yet if I sold something at 1,500, it's down to, say, 1,410, 1,411. I can be like, you know what, screw this. I'm just going to buy that theta back, and I'm going to get a small gain that way. So I'll still get a gain. It's just the ratio won't be trading, and I can move my theta back to the wallet, put a new sell order, do what I will. And the third final outcome is that those orders can't hit because neither of those two prices go down. Thus, both markets go higher. And accumulation of Bitcoin. And if you're like me, I don't mind owning Bitcoin. I own Bitcoin. I... If you're trading, you might be in a business where you are needing to uh, get income from Bitcoin or use Bitcoin as money. So if I'm going to be using Bitcoin as money as it is anyway, I could just uh, suffice for such a deal and write it off as a losing trade. And I'm going to have my share of losers, but your share of losers versus your shares of winners can have an interesting ratio amongst the two, I would only suppose as far as being on the positive end of that spectrum. So let's take a look at uh, the markets and show an example of what I mean. And we'll use the DJB chart for this example. So we'll look at this on the daily chart, or the daily time frame. And maybe you're thinking, okay, 148, this thing's going to go lower. Uh, maybe, and, and I'm going to be thinking myself, maybe I do this, am I going to... I'm going to look at this video. Do I see any reason why I see a short setup here? After all, what a fantastic rally, but it's given a lot of it back. And if Bitcoin has a dominant move, it could just play out. Especially, I mean, I don't care the coin that I sell if it goes up or down, because once it's sold, that's the price point that it's at. But I'm trading DGB against coins like GRS, and I'm thinking, do I sell some GRS now to buy DGB later at a lower price? Not at 148, maybe at like 140 or 141, 142. Put a buy order in there. And of course, if you're playing longer term volatility, by most certain, same thing again. If you're looking to say buy back and try to get her down at say 120, 100, 125, maybe it hits, maybe it doesn't. Let's take a look at this on the four hour. Again, like this is, I'm not supporting well within the 18. On the one hour, what's the 18 loads, which is going to be scrolling down like this, yeah. I mean, it's at some point it's going to stop going lower, but it's obviously been continuously for um, almost a double digit amount of hours been in this downturn, especially after this like uh, second uh, rebound route or try to get it back rally again. You have this great move, big, big green candle of 5.8.4% for the hour at uh, 7 a.m. and then just to give it all back. And then not supporting this. It's already had a good move from the support level. I mean, this is where it could go. But, see, my strategy thinking is, well, what if I sell some GRS now? And funny, I have some Litecoin just sitting around there. And I'm going to tell the story, in a, and I'm, that just might what I might have to sell right now to try to buy this cheaper and just take a chance. I'll have to see if Litecoin's a decent short. If that's the case, I might do it. But Komodo, oh, oh, oh. I deposited some Litecoin on Binance, and pretty much the second I did, Komodo just pops, and that's what I wanted to buy. So oftentimes, I'm actually cheering for the coins I like to go well, down a bit. Uh, a lot of times, Sky's up to 185. Let me just quickly check to see what that means for me. Uh, that, that's not even up. It's, it's still the same. But Komodo, this is... Well, it's, what a pullback. Maybe I might get my buy in there still. But this thing just started to shoot up like no other. And uh, I made my deposit just before this started to go up. I'm like, you know what, let's just turn some Litecoin into Komodo. Not anymore. Not anymore. 
So it's worth. I'm trading out DGB against uh, three different coins. So let's see if uh, I don't want to. I don't have Bitcoin Cash. That's too. I really can't do that because it'd take two hours to get on the exchange. But Litecoin, I already have a small amount of it. No, it's an okay amount. Medium, it's actually a decent size amount. But you know what? I'm trading both of them at good stakes. So I definitely have a suffice amount where I could quote unquote short Litecoin. Is it worth the potential play? Let's take a look at this on the single hour. Well, after the break of this support at the 1456 handle, that, that was the move. Now it's just correcting again. Uh, we've established some resistance at 1436 in here. Uh, that's some upper points from the level here at 1424. It's it really, it's it, the way I look at the math here. If either Litecoin goes down or DGB goes down, it needs to be the play. But as far as a ratio trade, I want to, I, I have to sell the coin that's in the lead, basically. And if I look at my spreadsheet to determine which of my coins is in the lead, what I do is I go to my DGB LTC on here, which is right here. Right now, Litecoin is leading. It's up 4% since so my last trade. So therefore, I'm going to sell the one that's in the lead, which is Litecoin. It's either going to be Litecoin or GRS I'm going to do it with. Either or. Uh, like, uh, G where's GRS and DGB? Right here. So right now, this is also higher. So they're both in the lead. And I might even do it with both. I could put another deposit in. No, use, no problem. Um, I might just do it with one just for something to do. So what I'll do is I'll take the one that I like more for a short between a GRS and LTC, sell it, put a buy order in for, wait a second, if I'm doing DGB, I can't do this on Binance, so, okay, I can, well, uh, like, okay, that, this I would have to do on what exchange? DGB, Litecoin, I'm pretty much going to do, well, if I'm withdrawing Litecoin, it's, uh, I'm selling Litecoin, so I can do this on either Poloniex or Bittrex, and this I have to do on Bittrex. So I got I got Litecoin on Binance. I don't know what I'm gonna do with you. Uh, but probably I mean yeah I'm gonna probably take a look to see if uh, uh, if this one of the things I realize is that uh, there's gonna be a good influx coming into Litecoin. I'm probably not gonna want to do it there. GRS is that worth a short? I mean as long as it's mild at a play, it kind of is. Single hour is having its correctionary move, but what a kick-ass big decline it's been since it's left the 18, uh, a little over 24 hours ago. On the four hour, that's, to me, I, I don't like the short here. And that's, of course, I mean, the thing is, the reason why I do, though, is because I still think Bitcoin over the next little bit is... Uh, going to have a, a decent size rise and just the dominance in Bitcoin coming in. I like it a bit more seeing that the fact that it's in this correctionary mode. What I could do is I could put a sell order in for about 4500 4489 for the 18 average of highs. And I wouldn't mind the short as much on that, especially because uh, as long as, like I say, I mildly like it because I'm, it's almost like I'm either shorting GRS or DGB. I got two chances to win. As long as one of them goes down, I'm going to get a successful trade. If DGB goes down, I'll get a successful ratio trade. And if this goes down from where I buy, say, at 40, 44 high, then I'll be able to just, again, pretend the ratio didn't happen and I'll add a couple or three extra or four extra percent more GRS to what I had. And thus have a successful trade that way. And then the final aspect, and I, I love that aspect as well because what happens if, say, I were to do that? I go in there, I put a sell order in tonight, and it hits, we'll say, I'm going to put a sell order here. And... Then it hits, and then I go to bed, I wake up, I, I'm, I, I put my sell order in, I put my buy order in for DGB after that. My buy order doesn't hit because the markets go up. So I wake up, and this is up to here. DGB is at 168, 172 or something, and I love it. 
So I'm just going to wipe, wipe off that trade, count as a loss. There goes some GRS that's going to be forced now to be Bitcoin at, of course, a lower price. And I'm just going to keep on rolling with the new message of the markets. And, and technically, I can get that ratio trade back at a later point. It could work out that way. I mean, supposedly, if this were to say go up here, okay, let's just assume this goes up, a DGB barely went up. So this goes up, say, a better rate. So this goes up, say, I don't know, well, I mean, this up here is only, well, let's say it's even much, like, this is only the hour time frame. Let's just say this goes up a, a great amount, like 25%. And DGB only goes up, say, 10% or, or 8%. Obviously, uh, above that number that I thought was a good short number at level. And I'll end up, selling this coin and buying the DGB at that higher price and I'll still have this buy order but maybe this comes back down or the DGB goes back down enough where I can complete that trade later and one example might be okay so DGB say goes up I don't know eight basis points from where to, from where we are now so I end up buying it then from the ratio because of this great move here and yet it goes down, say, 20 basis points DGB is. Well, now I can fill that trade in I just would do just now, maybe five days later or something like that, or, or 20 days later. And again, if I'm in the business of using Bitcoin as money, although a lot of times it's more often Litecoin, but uh, I can do that. And if I wanted to, I could just store it in Litecoin and just roll the dice with it. Another thing, too, is... You can use it, and I could just, if I wanted to, let's just assume I turn into Bitcoin. I could just date, if I just wanted to do something fun to day trade, maybe I got that small amount of Bitcoin that I'd have on here. Then I would probably look to, uh, I'm just seeing something in here now, because this is what I'm, I'm refer I just know something like this was happening. And I forgot what I was going to say, and that sucks. Anyway. Now, I'm, I'm looking at this more trying to determine my sell order. That's that's why I stalled there and stopped. Yeah, I think I got to roll with the, what I originally said and have resistance here. So I'm looking at this. Is this a time where I just want to sell as it's breaking down? You see this green candle up starting to go down. I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is a good time because I just see it breaking down like that, leaving the 18 lows. And maybe it is, and it very easily could. But uh, I think if I was going to do that, what I want to do is, uh, and I know I'm just changing my school of thought on this and going back to it. But obviously, major decline from the left-hand side of the screen up until the, the far end on the right here. And uh, so here we have the spot breaking above this level of resistance, getting above the 18 average of highs. Whenever I see this, if I want to sell this because I think it's going to go down, I'm going to need to see weakness here amongst this 18 average of lows. And if it's going to be able to win in this accomplishment, then I really have to think that uh, it, it can make a move up to at least one more leg higher in here. And that's where it would be, and uh, considering it's very, that's probably what I'm going to do is just do that. And this whole Komodo thing is just really, really frustrating. Anything else popping up? Like, arc at point, anything at like 1% is like, meh, nothing. Bitcoin, though, I mean, 95, 83, that's just phenomenal. T fuel, what's going on with that? I haven't looked at that all day. Um, I got this line here, 360. What did this line mean? That's where I sold last. That's right. That's my last sell order hit. That's what that line means. So I haven't bought back yet. Not at that price. Uh, just for something to... This looks like a short setup, too. Do I want to short this? I can. Hmm. 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 I think I might have to. Wow, interesting chart setup. Okay, sorry for all this pausing. I'm doing a lot of thinking right now. Let me go to the 15. Man, failed breakdown, possible failed breakout here.
I think what might be good to do is see what B&B &B is doing. Egon, that's not the... This is this is not good for BM. This is not good. I mean, I gotta take a look at T fuel against BTC. I think as well if I'm gonna do this. The reason why I'm just trying to see how confident I am that the that the T fuel is gonna go down, and if I got enough of a confidence level, then I might might as well. I can do it. I'll sell some on the market and just look to buy it back cheaper. It's just an easy quick trade. I got enough of them where I can do it very easily. I mean, there were free coins given to me. Alrighty, so here's a spot where it comes down to this 18 average of lows on a, on a correctionary move from this nice little rally in here. Makes this rally a tent, but it barely, first thing that's a concern is it, I mean, it barely broke this resistance. It could have gotten a little bit better. I mean, I would have liked to see it go to like the 408, 409 mark. Then it comes back down a little deeper than I would have liked, but it did come to this key area here in the 18 lows. Rallies back up, and then in looking at this on the single error time frame, this is where it gets very difficult. There's your failed breakdown, failed breakout situation. After coming in here, making the lower high, and this red candle down moved quickly after this. Yeah, I know it can find support in the short term time frame here on the five can do things like find support in here, get above this, but it's it's still it's it's just not it's had a lot of opportunities here on the five on the eighteen lows where it came from and you expect it to be support there. There it is. Markets can correct either that for, through time or through price. And this and usually when it corrects through price, it almost never does it with really uh with it always has at least one price correction within a time correction. Meaning, in a, in a standard time correction, maybe this is the up move. You get something like this, and then you get this as a time correction. Well, this is a price correction here, and then there's the time from it. But in here, I mean, this is just a pure, pure, pure price correction in time, or excuse me, just that of a time correction. And it's been from the time it got there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven periods. That's seven that's a lot and it's showing weakness in each individual period the previous before how it manages to uh, break down below this uh, shorter term level of support i'm not going to look at the one for that but that that was a weak five minute period so bnb doesn't look as strong which actually weakens the effect you kind of want the opposite if you're looking to short uh, T-Fuel against BTC, but let's now take a look at T-Fuel against Bitcoin, because if it's looking worse, then, and if it's going to look for a breakdown of a higher volatile move, which I normally would expect compared to the BNB coin, then it still might be a viable play. Okay, look at that five minute, the volatility is like, meh, whatever, but it's low. Four hour term time frame, we've had a lot of sideways correctionary moves. And you know what, there's a lot of reason to think that this is a good short candidate here. And even at that, I could cover, if I were to sell T-Fuel, I, I got two places I could cover it against, either Bitcoin or BNB. Um, yeah, this move here gets above it at the 20-hour time frame. And uh, then pulls back and this last, it's to me, let me just see if, yeah, it's had a long poise correction. I think that this has got a lot more weakness involved within it. Oh man, this is. Well, you know what? Yeah, I'm here. It's all about the game and how you play it, I guess. I'm. It's the thing is, if I'm wrong, it just sucks to sell that the whatever I sell, like the fifteen, twenty, twenty-five percent of what I got, and then really from that point on, leave myself up with less ammunition and training it on the up moves. But that's fine, I mean, because that's part of the game. Okay, so anything else for me to look at for that? I don't think so. Um, but BTC, I mean, I'm, I'm confident BTC is going to have a decent-sized rally into the day and going into tomorrow. It just looks as if that's the case. Money's going into Bitcoin. The altcoins, I mean, it's been Bitcoin dominance. That's what I've been showing in here just over this. I mean... 
I mean, this could be the top in here, but I wouldn't be surprised if in this we see, at least for this scale scale number, that this goes up another like basis point or close to it, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 spot. Even over a one spot, maybe go close to 62 or higher, which means a lot of those coins are going to go down. Okay, it's 8.50 p.m. I've been doing this video for 25 minutes, and here I am basically not even planning on, well, I mean, I this here, not even planning on talking about that. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Come on. I'm going to sell some tea fuel and just see what happens in the next day. Any short setups for Theta, maybe? I mean, it's so fast to set Theta on the exchange. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I could see how it could have another little move down. If so, what would I sell it against? I mean, it's, it's down a lot from this high, but so oversold at this point. Now you have this move sideways, and it's showing weakness here with the 18 lows. Again, I think same thing, maybe. You might want to... Does it look like there's any possibility of a short-term move into, like, a little higher here? Maybe come up to the 18 highs? Does the hour time... It's... Oh, man, that's not pretty. Well, we'll see how this move in here goes. If it's able to get above this level of... Find support here and get above the highs. Maybe you can test some of this empty spot, at least where it came from at 1382 to 1390. Again, here I'm just talking to myself. And this is where we're at that uh, stage uh, number three. Come back to uh, support. Stage number one, bad flatten out. Stage number two, is it resistance established. Stage number three, come back to the band, which it did so here, about a little over an hour back. Comes up to this high, now pulling back. This, uh, Well, I mean, if we see continued weakness from here and it breaks down, yeah, but it very easily... Oh, this does... I mean, really, this last couple periods aren't too strong. I mean, it doesn't mean it's not going to break out and stage four won't happen soon, but... It's not looking as good anymore after the last two, three periods. And I know the volatility periods. Okay, well, this is five-minute term time frame. After establishing this support in here, come back. We're down a second time. And, uh, okay, let's just see what I can short this against. Is Theta winning against anything right now? I'm looking to uh, sell Dash for Theta right now. Because, uh, no, we're actually here. This is going down. That means th Theta's winning. I could sell Theta for Dash. What else do we got Theta in? This is Litecoin, pretty much at last trade. Theta and Neo. Right now, Theta is overperforming Neo because it's the second one and it's going down. Theta and Qtum. That's pretty much last trade. Let's take a look at Neo and Dash and see what I can do. Maybe uh, some of them might have an interesting. I mean, it's all in the same vote area here. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I said it's correctionary mode. It's pretty much the exact same thing. We can see it almost in here. There's your failed, not really, yeah, it's a failed breakdown, I suppose. So, so the oscillate lower. It was just a nice little down move. And, uh, stage number one, band flatten out. Stage number two, stage number three. I'll figure this out. I just, I should just, but I'm giving you the idea here because this is to me one of the setups where I think it wouldn't be too, too bad. So I'm going to leave, sell some T fuel. Figure out what I'll do with it after. If it's a losing trade, I don't care. In fact, I kind of hope it is because I like my coins being worth more. But you, you know, I know I don't, but I do. You know what I mean. Uh, have yourself a great day. And then, of course, all these other ratios I talk about selling both the, uh, the short trade for selling some theta and some uh, DG, the DGB trade. So selling like GRS or something and trying to get DGB at a better price. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.